Hi again. We are now presenting the evaluation of our structures that we have identified by two algorithms, the growth shrink and the hill climbing. We are basically interested in looking at two evaluation criteria, the BIC or BIC, um, which looks at the structure overall, so the fit um, to the overall um, data. And we are also interested in looking at the root mean squared error um, for certain target constructs, and we are here interested in the root mean squared error for the usage and the technology uh, adoption intention. Um, to do that, we would start first um, with looking at the evaluation criteria for the um, growth shrink algorithm. And um, this already starts with a specialty here. Um, we have on the right hand side reproduced the structure that we got from the growth shrink algorithm. And what we found there were a couple of undirected relationships between constructs, so between EE and FC, EE, PE, and PE, and SN. And the first thing that we would need to do is we need to um, tell the algorithm or translate these relationships into directions um, to make these kind of calculations, to turn this into a directed um, relationship. And this has to build on theory and your knowledge and your ideas on how these relationships would be. So this is the first step that we require to do the calculations. And Anna, you have already prepared code again for us uh, in uh, R. And I see that you also start with this first step of, of letting the software or the algorithm know how do we translate these undirected relationships into directed ones. Am I correct? Or yes. Thank you, Nicole. Um, we will use this function called set R in order to set the Rs in our structure. So that's the name of the object where mm -hmm. our structure is, is um, saved. And then we define the direction. So in this case, we would like to have a, an edge that goes from EE to FC. Right? So we can see, we can see here the, this edge. Mm -hmm. So we want to have a pattern or a direction from EE to FC. So basically, uh, we turn it into an arrow. Um, from EE to FC. Yeah. And we do the same thing uh, for the other constructs. And again, if you have this for your model, you have to make this decision based on your conceptual thinking. So this is something where you, again, as a researcher and your brain uh, is requested to tr make this kind of transformation. Yeah. If we execute this code, we will not see yet the, any effect. So internally, these uh, edges were directed. And now we can use it. Of course, we can also visualize it if we want. Here we just um, um, we are interested just in evaluating the BIC score for for our structure. So I will use um, from the package we are learned. Here we have to be a little bit more explicit because the score function can be encountered in many other packages in R. So we have to define the scores function from our particular library we are learned mention the structure for which we want to evaluate the BIC, the data, and the type of metric. Of course, here we can use the Bayesian information criteria or archaic information criteria or other criteria that are available under this uh, particular function. Mm -hmm. So actually, the structure can be evaluated based on other metrics in addition to BIC. Now we try to keep it a bit simple here. So we're just focusing on the first step on the BIC. So Anna, you have just started or run um, the algorithm or the function and what we see in the output uh, window is a value of minus 5,713 point uh, whatsoever. Um, so we get the BIC score that is now related to the directed row shrink um, graphical structure that we have evaluated. So this is the first score that we generate for this overall structure that we have. Um, the second thing that we are um, interested in is a root mean squared error. Um, and um, we will need to also perform some code to get this root mean squared error. Yes, so this is another metric based on which we would like to evaluate our model. So basically here we evaluate the prediction performance on let's say unseen data, or at least we split our data in K folds. In this case, K is equal to 10. Of course, we can decide how many folds. So the algorithm will train uh, the model based on nine of these folds and will test the prediction performance on the fold kept apart. And this is something also the PLS community might be knowledgeable about because we are using also this cross validation procedure in the PLS predict uh, algorithm. So um, 
This is the same idea that is coming actually from the machine learning world. Yeah. And one more thing maybe to highlight, um, I mean, you, we can see it here in the code. We are here interested in the target construct. That is also something that you see in the code here. Um, that we are here first calculating or estimating it for um, the BI uh, construct, and then later on do the same thing for the use construct. The, avail the available metric is the mean square error. Of course, if you are interested in a root mean square error, we can easily take the square root. But by default, we'll get an MSE. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you get the value from this output. And then we can, of course, select that value from the output and report it in our particular article or um, yeah, yeah. scientific paper. So when you do the code on your own data set, you just have to first estimate the um, uh, mean, mean squared error um, and then look at the value that you get in the output and put it into the formula to calculate the root mean squared error um, based on it. And we get a value of 0. 775 um, for the root mean squared error of the BI construct. The thing is, um, it is not as with an R square where we get an immediate feeling for what the value actually means because all of these values are depending on the scale levels um, of the variables that we are using. So the 5,000 uh, whatsoever doesn't tell us directly how good or bad the model is, neither does the root mean squared error. Um, but these values are often used to compare models in terms of their quality. So we could compare uh, later on the values for the growth shrink algorithm or the values for the hill climbing algorithm and then see which model performs better um, than the other. Should we quickly calculate also the, yes. the values for the usage just to complete um, the calculations? And we see here a score of 0 0.881 that is then also reported and commented on in our manuscript. <laughs>